Greetings and welcome back. Kamal here and today we have a very interesting infinite series based on factorials. It's the sum over k from 0 to infinity of k factorial divided by 2k plus 1 factorial. And I have evaluated one or two infinite series based on factorials before and the results are always quite nice along with the solution developments. And it's exactly the same case over here. So anyway, where should we begin? Well, we'll do the obvious by stating the factorials as gamma functions because we all love the gamma function. I mean, most of my integrals make use of the gamma function, so why not just spam it over here as well? So we have the sum over k of k factorial is gamma k plus 1, so 2k plus 1 factorial is gamma 2k plus 2, which is pretty interesting. Why is this interesting? Because, notice that in the denominator we have gamma k plus 1 plus k plus 1. So why not expand the term here by a factor of gamma k plus 1? So we have gamma k plus 1 divided by gamma 2k plus 2 times gamma k plus 1 divided by gamma k plus 1. And that means we have the sum over k from 0 to infinity of gamma k plus 1 times gamma k plus 1 divided by gamma k plus 1 plus k plus 1 times 1 by gamma k plus 1. And what exactly is the utility of this expansion? Well, notice here that we can invoke the beta function. Recall that the beta function with complex arguments u and v can be expressed in terms of the gamma function as gamma u times gamma v divided by gamma u plus v. So that means what we have here is in fact the beta function at k plus 1 and k plus 1. And this implies that the sum s is in fact the sum over k from 0 to infinity of beta k plus 1 k plus 1 divided by gamma k plus 1. And now we can invoke the integral form of the beta function. Again, the beta function with complex arguments u and v is the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the u minus 1 times 1 minus x to the v minus 1 dx. And this implies that the sum s equals the sum over k of what exactly do we have? We have 1 by, terribly sorry about that, 1 by gamma k plus 1 times the integral of x to the k plus 1 minus 1, so that's just x to the k, times 1 minus x to the k dx. Notice that we can play around with this term over here in that we can write this as x times 1 minus x to the k, which is equal to x minus x squared to the k. And what exactly is the utility of that? Well, we have the sum over k from 0 to infinity, again, terribly sorry about that, of the integrals from 0 to 1 of x minus x squared to the k divided by gamma k plus 1 dx. We then switch up the order of the integration and summation operators. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over k of x minus x squared to the k divided by gamma k plus 1, which of course is k factorial. And what exactly is this infinite series? Well, it's actually something quite similar, uh, quite familiar to us. Recall that the exponential function e to the z can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers k of z to the k divided by k factorial. So in our case, we have z equal to x minus x squared. And this implies that s is now the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x minus x squared dx. And of course, we could just write this as e to the negative x squared minus x. And now what? Well, we have x squared minus x, so we might as well complete the square. I mean, that would 
look nicer, I guess, and it, it's got to have some utility. So we have x squared minus x, and expanding this as x squared minus 2 times x times 1 half, correct? So we need 1 half squared here and negative of 1 half squared. This whole thing would be x minus 1 half squared, so that's x minus 1 half whole thing squared minus a quarter. And we have e to the negative of this thing here, which means that s is the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative x minus 1 half squared plus a quarter dx. And we can expand this using the properties of the exponential function, of course. So we have integral 0 to 1, e to the negative x minus a quarter squared times e to the quarter, which is just a constant, so it doesn't bother us whatsoever. And from here, we can make a transformation. That is, oh wait, terribly sorry about that. This is a factor of 1 half only. We're going to let x minus 1 half equal t, which implies that dx equals dt. But what about the limits? Well, as x approaches 0, t will approach negative 1 half. And as x approaches 1, t approaches 1 minus 1 half being 1 half. So s is now e to the quarter times the integral from negative 1 half to positive 1 half of e to the negative t squared dt. And of course, the integrand is an even function of t, so instead of integrating from negative to positive 1 half, we'll just integrate from 0 to 1 half and double the result. So we have 2 times e to the quarter outside times e to the negative t squared dt. Now, the closed form for this integral is, is expressed in terms of another very special function called the error function. So we can safely conclude that our entire solution development results in an error. I think that's pretty cool. So the error function of x equals 2 divided by root pi times the integral from 0 to x of e to the negative t squared dt. But wait, this implies that the integral from 0 to 1 half of e to the negative t squared dt equals root pi by 2 times earth 1 half. So we have s equal to 2 times root root e times root pi by 2 times earth 1 half. And, of course, a lovely sight for any math nerd is to see terms cancelling out. So this implies that our really cool infinite series sorts out to root pi, root, wait, it's root pi times root e times earth one half. So we got pi there, we got e there, and we have half an error, which is a pretty nice result, I must say. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and more importantly, I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe, share the video as well to, you know, spread the error that we're so proud of, I guess. Drop me a follow on Instagram, and in case you like the channel and the effort I'm putting in, consider supporting me on Patreon. All links are in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.